Ulcerative arthritis, dactylitis, what we need to see. Dactylitis as a word coming, have two components. One is prefix and one is a suffix. The prefix dactylus, which means finger or digit, with addition of itis, which means inflammation, gives the term of dactylitis, which means inflammation and the swelling of the digits, either toes or fingers. Uh, dactylitis characterized by a uniform swelling, diffuse swelling usually affecting the whole digit structure and covering all the joints, including the MCB, BIB joint or interpharyngeal joints. So uh, this swelling cannot palpate the actual joint swelling. This, from this uh, diffuse swelling comes the name sausage digit. Dactylitis, as regards its clinical presentation, have a well blown, full blown uh, activity or inflammatory uh, signs like uh, redness, hotness, and tenderness of the whole digits. But there is some clinical aspects we need to understand about, about dactylitis and some insights regarding uh, pathogenesis and imaging also could be needed. So we are simulating dactylitis as the moon in the sky but the main is already seen, but in some situation, we need to have more close vision to understand what's happening in dactylitis. As regards the cause of dactylitis, dactylitis mainly occurs with uh, spondyloarthropathy in general, including cirrhotic arthritis, which is the most common uh, cause of uh, dactylitis, but also happens with other forms of spondyloarthritis like reactive arthritis and undifferentiated spondyloarthropathy. In other non-arthritic causes of uh, dactylitis or non-autoimmune uh, causes of dactylitis include some infiltrative granulomatous disorders like sarcoidosis and TB infections, and also an another common cause which is crystal arthropathy, especially gout, which also gout can cause a diffuse dactylitis with a whole digit. About the prevalence of dactylitis, there is a lot of references showing, uh, showing uh, prevalence ranging from 50 to 70%. According to Propank in 2005, showing uh, among uh, 535 patients, 260 of them have dactylitis, representing about 70% 70 70 of the uh, affections, affected uh, patients. And there is, a, uh, according to Propang, there is actually a connection between uh, severe radiological damage and the and presence of dactylitis. Dactylitis is more common in feet than in the hands and is often asymmetrical, affecting one side more than the other side, usually affecting the dominant hand and index finger, and in the feet, usually affecting the fourth toe, according to the registries. Usually painful and tender, as we said before, but there is a subset called cold dactylitis, which is long-standing cases of chronic dactylitis. The, the digit becomes swollen, but is not tender, which is called a cold dactylitis. Why dactylitis happens in psoriatic arthritis? It is very known in psoriatic arthritis or psoriasis in general, a phenomena called Koppner phenomena. This, this phenomena describes the onset of psoriasis and other dermatological disorders resulting from continuous uh, injuries or scratches or even trauma. Uh, there is some another variant uh, similar to Koppner phenomena of the skin called deep Koppner phenomena, which happens at the level of musculoskeletal tissue. And the clues about this phenomena uh, actually due to some, uh, some points seen in the prevalence of uh, dactylitis that is already prevalent more in the feet than the hand, which is already more involved to uh, trauma than the hand. And if affecting the hand, usually affecting the dominant hand, which is connected to the active sites, usually subjected to more injuries and more uh, trauma. So this led to uh, the introduction of the idea that dactylitis could occur due to what is called deep Koppner phenomena as a possible, for, possible uh, trigger of dactylitis. To understand more about the potential uh, pathogenesis or immune pathways in dactylitis, uh, among the tendons and especially at the incisal attachments, we have uh, different subsets of inactive T lymphocytes, especially gamma delta T cells and innate undifferentiated T cells. These two cells actually in, in predisposed patients with positive HLA or, or have predisposed factors to cirrhotic arthritis 
are very sensitive to mechanical loads. Under mechanical loads, these two cells secrete interleukin-23 and interleukin-17, resulting in activation of inflammatory pathway at that site, following by production of, of TNF-alpha and interleukin-22, resulting in uh, the picture, ideal picture of inflammation at the whole digit, which is called dactylitis. So we have a mechanical power, which is transmitted to a biological uh, power through uh, different mechanisms, resulting in activation of inflammatory cytokines from TNF alpha and interleukin 6 and interleukin 23. So we have dactylitis, which is well known and, and simply seen in clinical assessment. So why we could need imaging? Actually, imaging is not a basic requirement for the diagnosis of dactylitis, as we said before, because it's very prevalent to be a very well-blown picture of inflammation, which can be seen easily. Uh, but for uh, dactylitis, actually, uh, the description of what's involved in the uh, inflamed digits, the um, imaging could be valuable in this. As for a long time, we have a conception that dactylitis involves inflammation of synovitis, tenosynovitis, and encitis in a combination. This is a primary component of dactylitic fingers. But if we go to revise the data coming, coming from MRI, and ultrasound especially, we will see that something like synovitis or could be present only in 17% in some uh, trials and up to maximum 66%. So it's not a fixed item to be seen always in dactylitis. And also the same for encystitis, which is not a common finding to be seen with uh, dactylitic fingers on flexural tendon insertion. But according to the imaging data, the most prevalence of the always fixed found uh, findings in subcutaneous tissue inflammation, inflammation of flexural tendon covering and tendon polis, which is a common finding to be seen always with dactylitis and imaging data. Tendon polis, especially for the flexor tendon and the fingers, are responsible to fix the, tendon, uh, the flexor tendon in place, especially in dynamic motions. So we have another theory, which is called functional incisis theory, which was treated by Dennis McGungle and his colleagues showing that the traction point between the polis and tendon junction acts as a potential functional incisis. And at that, time, at that side, this is a potential site for triggering the inflammation of dactylitis. So the friction point between the poly and the flexor tendon at that site there is a, a theory that showing this is a functional incisis and inflammation of this functional point trigger the inflammation in dactylitic finger. So let's see it in reality. This is one of my patients with uh, flexor. Uh, this is showing ultrasound picture of the flexor tendon. We can see here, the, uh, this is a MCB bone and this is a proximal phalanx and we have this is a parallel lines of the flexor Tendon, we can notice here an hypoechoic shadow over uh, almost over the head of MCB, which is a tendon poly fixing the flexor tendon in place in dynamic motion. This is almost a normal tendon poly in normal finger, non non-dactylitic finger. Compare this to this one of my patients with psoriatic arthritis under treatment. He comes suddenly with diffuse index finger swelling with typical hotness, redness, and tenderness. So it's typically a dactylitis. We can notice here the, the subcutaneous inflammation showing the hypoechoic uh, shadows between the subcutaneous fat indicating inflammation, plus the, the hallmark here, we can notice this tension of the tendon bolus, showing inflammation of the tendon covering and inflammation of the tendon bolus. This is the typical finding in ultrasound picture of dactylic finger. We have this tension of almost all tendon bullets of the flexor tendon in a case of dactylitis. While if you can look for the joints here, there is no significant joint inflammation and the tendon itself showing no significant tenosynovitis. It is only inflammation of the tendon covering. Again, same patient with Doppler signal. We can notice that the, the color Doppler signal almost present in subcutaneous tissue, denoting subcutaneous tissue inflammation. And around the tendon polis, here is the tendon poly inflammation. This is a tectritic finger. We can notice all the Doppler signal are in subcutaneous tissue and around the tendon polis, but not 
and the tendon of deep to the joint even. It's a typical picture of dactylatic finger. Again, with another patient with dactylitis of the big toe, we can notice here some inflammation of the hypoechoic inflammation of the uh, interpharyngeal joint and against Doppler signal mainly present in tendon covering and around the extensor tendon here. So the main pathogenesis of dactylitis comes from the deep Kopner phenomena, the cobra phenomena that indicating the, a mechanical factor or mechanical load that triggers the inflammation usually at the site of the functional incisus between the tendon pollis and, ten and the flexor tendon resulting in distension of the tendon like that. And this is a real case of patients with dactylitis. We can see the distension of the tendon pollis with almost normal uh, interpharyngeal joints here and tendon itself is fine. This is a flexor tendon in the cartoon corresponding to the ultrasound image with distension of the tendon pollis was almost normal or very minimal inflammation of the of the MCB joint. It's a typical uh, picture of dactylitis or ultrasound. So ultrasound or imaging in general is important uh, not to diagnose the dactylitis. You can diagnose it clinically, but it is very important to define which components are involved in the inflammation, either tendons or tendon covering or tendon bullies or even MCB uh, or interpharyngeal joints. It's very important to decide how we can treat as we can discuss later. If we go for treatments, actually the most validated and the most important and applicable guideline, which is the GRABA recommendations, which divided the treatment objective to different domains. We can we discuss here the GRABA recommendation for the management of dactylitis. According to the GRABA, dactylitis first should be treated by NSAIDs and conventional DMARs, including mistroxate, sulfasalazine, and lefronamide, ending finally if the patient not responding by corticosteroid injections. And for injections, imaging is very important, actually. So if you can see the components of inflammation here could be different. So the direction of the steroid injection could be carefully placed at the site of the inflammation. If we have a patient with subcutaneous inflammation and tendon poly or tendon covering inflammation, and you are directing your needle to inject the synovial or, or the joint itself, the response would be very less if you, are, if you are directing the injection exactly to the inflammation site. So that's why we, um, we recommend to use ultrasound to, the, to assess the athletic finger to define the exact pathology type and guide the needle to the exact site of inflammation. So this is a phase one, and according to the GRABA, patient will start with NSAIDs, conventional demands, and corticosteroids. And finally, if not responding, we have to move to uh, biologics. And the, uh, the approved biologics for, for dactylitis still today is interleukin 12, 23, and the leukin 23 blockers recently approved, the leukin 17 inhibitors, the TNF alpha inhibitors, and BDA4 also have, a, have a good data regarding the dactylitis uh, management. And after even failure of one of these biologic mechanisms, mechanism, we have to switch between the different biologics or BDA4 to achieve the final remission. This was my final slide. This is my references. And thank you.